to talk about elaborating. A lot of the times as a speaking coach, people are coming to me to help control their ramble. I ramble and I have to figure out how to be more concise. But we see just as much as a problem in speakers who don't know how to elaborate. They just make the simple point and stop. And when they lose their place, they get stuck and they don't know how to continue. They can't find a way to embellish or go on or if an audience asks, tell me more about something, they're stumped. The art of elaborating is just as important as the art of being concise. And I want to talk about that one. What elaborating and spontaneously embellishing requires is the ability to listen inward to the impulses in your brain. The ideas that pop like popcorn at any given time. Our brains are pretty active places and there's stuff going back there in the subconscious, but you have to learn to hear it. Not only hear it, but hear it, grab it, and throw it out there through your voice, your continuing dialogue. I don't tend to get stuck as a speaker, but I lose my place all the time, but I can listen inward. So you take this vlog, for example. This is improvisation. I, I have a plan. I know where I'm trying to go with this, but I'm just in it in one take, and I'm going to talk my way through it, and I'm going to avoid getting stuck and having to re-edit because I didn't know where I was going. I wanna suggest a practice to develop this skill, the ability to improvise and elaborate. And it's a little out of the box. For some of you, it'll feel a little uncomfortable and maybe silly, and maybe it is, except that it works. The technique is talk as long as you can without stopping and follow the impulses in your mind and let the communication wander where it does, but keep the conversation going. I did this just last week in a car. I was alone. I was a little tired. I needed to stay awake. I had three hours to drive in the dark, and I just decided I was going to present from mile one to the finish line, and that's what I did. So it wasn't a beautifully orchestrated speech. It wasn't a speech at all. It was rambling. It was intentional improvisation. So I would speak about something, and I would listen while I'm speaking to ideas as they would pop up, grab them, and let it go wherever it went. And I actually recorded a three-hour rambling uh, presentation, a rambleathon, and it, it was actually kind of interesting and somewhat fascinating as I had Chat GPT uh, transcribe it and 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 study it. But it's not important to create content this way. It's important to practice grabbing the impulses. Now, a quick beat on how the brain works. The brain is constantly synaptically exploding inside. It's filled with thoughts and ideas. And in the 20% that we are, are aware of, or 10% or 5%, some small percent we're aware of, there's a lot more going in the background. And you can start to hear it if you want to. Think about it when you go to sleep at night. You go to sleep and it's not like the brain shuts down. It's more like the brain goes crazy. What you're relaxing out of is the focus energy, the on energy that you've been putting forth to be focused. You relax and you let the brain go crazy and the popcorn flies and you have dreams. It's a very active state sleeping. So to some degree, it's always going and you can always tap it. So I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. It might be a little silly, but I'm going to talk for 30 seconds-ish, and I'm just going to talk about how I improv in the car. So here goes. Action. Somebody once said, forever and a day. Forever and a day. It's kind of a funny concept because forever implies infinite, whereas and a day is very finite, and the two together clash, which is kind of funny. Maybe that's why they they like that. That's what the entertainment of it. But time, in a sense, is both infinite and finite. It's infinite in that it never stops here. The hands on the watch can go forever, but there are mile markers that actually get crossed as the hands go around the circle. And circles, they're like little wheels. And in my watch, I have three wheels, the big wheel, and then I have the little minutes and second hands. And my cars have wheels. And wheels are interesting because they're not like a ball. It's like if you took a ball and chopped it into slivers and took discs out of it. It's, it's a sliver of a ball that is a wheel. Now, I love my cars and all of my cars have wheels. My favorite car is the Jeep Wrangler of the ones. Here we have a pretty fast Audi, which is awesome. And we have an RV that's really cool for its reasons. But the Jeep is kind of modular. You can take the hatches off and have it open to the roof. Or you can take the whole top off, or you can take the doors off, or you can put 
the doors in the back on and the hatch on to keep the dogs in and have an open experience. It's like modular thinking is one of the things that I really like. And architecture is getting more and more modular as construction is looking at prefabrication. Modular prefabrication is a lot of how construction gets done. And it's really innovative. And innovation is something that is in all of us if we can think outside of the box. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there. There was 30 seconds, maybe that was a minute, but I was listening to ideas that would come up. I was talking about time and infiniteness and suddenly my watch came to mind. I'm talking about watches and I thought about the circular shape and it made me think of wheels and wheels made me think of cars. And from there, I might've gone to golden retrievers because that's what I put on the back of my Jeep when I put the side doors on the back, but leave the ones off on the front. This practice may sound silly, but it's the practice of hearing the impulses, the thoughts that pop like popcorn in the back of your mind. And I want you to give that a try. You don't have to do it for three hours. Try it for 10 minutes. Try it for 20 minutes. Do it sometime when you're alone on a drive. But that art form puts you in a really good spot, which is this. You're up in front of a group and you're speaking. You lose your place or an audience question veers you off in another direction, something goes wrong, you have to improvise. And if you're good at the art of hearing what the brain is doing back there and what the synapses are popping up, you can grab those nuggets and bring them out. And it's a practice to adopt to bring you to better improvisation.